Hello, beautiful creatives. Welcome to Beginner's Mind Art Mind. I'm Linda Marcel, and this week I'm gonna just have a play with some art supplies that I was sent. I was getting kind of tired of doing just traditional swatching videos, so this week I just went a little crazy and just explored the possibilities with the different art supplies that I was sent. So I go over the um, Mi Lang watercolor set and I actually really loved these. They were richly saturated and I loved the way they moved on the paper. So I show you that. And then I unbox um, an art snacks box. So last week's video was about the watercolor snacks and I painted the little boy on the island with the whale holding up the island. Um, and the folks at Art Snacks were kind enough to send me a box, a sample box of their Art Snacks subscription too. So I show you what actually comes in their Art Snacks version and play with the items that are in here a little bit. And what I did was I took out my giant mole skin. I haven't um, used this in quite a while and it was so much fun to work in this. I did this really expressive swatching, so much fun. Gave me a really good feel for how the paints lay into each other. And then with the metallics, um, I did a little expressive piece and I show you exactly how I did that, how I layered things, how I did negative painting. So I think it's a fun video. I think that you'll really enjoy it. I know I enjoyed doing it in more of an explorative way so much more than I have been with the more sort of laborious, regular swatching and labeling and everything. This was a lot of fun. If you do enjoy the video, I would really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm in pushing my video out there to a wider audience, which means a lot to me. So yeah, let's get on with the video. I think those of you that really like more expressive painting and more experimental painting videos are really gonna like this video. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. I think what I'll do is show you what I'm what I got in this art snacks box. And then so last week's video was on the watercolor snacks, and I used the watercolor snacks to do that whale painting. The little boy on the island with the whale. Well, they were generous enough because it's their birthday month to send me their art snacks box also. So this came with Lennox Legion, Lennox Cotton, designed to withstand both delicate and bold impressions with this sturdy substrate, was our first 100% cotton paper to be produced by an American mill Ooh. with a soft textured finish. It's the ideal surface for graphite, pastel, colored pencil, and charcoal. This is Lennox Cotton. Ooh. Wow, this does have a nice feel. Wow, now I'm wondering, do I want to work on this or my big sketchbook? Hmm, this actually has a really nice feel. I'm going to take a piece of this paper out. And I am just going to see what happens. Wow, it's glued in there really good. This reminds me of the paper that I do my... G clay prints on the 100% rag cotton, 100% cotton rag paper. Um, what a nice feel this has, huh? Okay, so I've got that, I've got this substrate. What's in the pack? Okay, this I believe is the Art Snacks Plus. So there's the regular Art Snacks menu. Uh, thank you for being an Art Snacks Plus. Yes, Art Snacks Plus subscriber. And it gives you information about their, they have a, a social hashtag, social media sites where they share. It says, because this is their birthday month, this month get free shipping in the Ark Snack Shop. I'll put this code below the video so that if you are interested, you can use those codes. Um, yeah, okay. So the, I already told you about the Lennox Cotton Paper Pad, nine by 12. It retails for 29.41. 
Sakura Jelly Roll Metallic Pen Set. Okay, so that's what this is. Um, this is an $8 and 31 cent, um, retail price. And then Royal Talons Extra Fine Gouache. I've never used Royal Talons. Okay, so that's a $12.95 retail. Uh, the snack. <laughs> Airheads Blue Raspberry. I'm not sure what it is. Candy, it says. It's candy, I don't know. Okay, so that's that. And then in here, in this little pack, you get... Wow, pretty paper. Ooh, maybe we'll collage with this paper. All right, so you get a sticker. I don't want to set my paper on fire. My candle is like right over here, and I'm waving my paper at it. Maybe I'll put my candle back here. Okay, celebrating 10 years of art snacks. So we get a sticker. Maybe I'll put that sticker on this sketchbook. And then there is... Um, Derwent Chroma Flow. Okay, that's a pencil I've never tried in lilac. And Derma Derwent Chroma Flow in scarlet. Never tried the Chroma Flow. Love Derwent pencils, but I've never tried the Chroma Flow. And then there is um, Tombow. Let's see. Okay, so this is an Art Alternatives water brush. And it's the kind that has the push here to release the water. It's got a very fine point. And then um, that's a $5.17 retail. Okay, this is the Tombow Fudinosuke. Food, Fudinosuke. Probably butchering that word. Twin tip brush pen, black and gray. $5.95 value. This is actually something that I have wanted. I actually had this on a Jackson's order that I never placed. So it's got the flexible tip and black. And then um, this is the gray. Ooh. Okay. I don't know if it's this paper or not, but this one, this side actually seems a little uh, dried out. Let's see. Get piece of um, art creations paper. Yeah, I think the gray side is a little dried out. It doesn't feel like, well, that one feels better. It doesn't feel like this cap is sealing properly. So, hmm, I'm not sure about this then. Yeah, I don't think this cap is sealing properly. This side is definitely more dried out, I believe. Okay, so we'll see what happens with that. And let's see what these pens look like. Oh, did I say the two Derwent Chroma Flow pencils go for $2.49 each? Um, I think I already said the gouache was $12.95. Okay, so let's throw those away and open these. Okay, these, it says that they write on dark paper, so maybe I'll want to grab a dark paper, too. Okay, so I grabbed the Soho dark paper to see how these write on dark paper. I've never tried... Ooh, they do! Wow! I never tried these pens. Wow, can you guys see that? They're they're uh, metallic, really metallic-y. Let's see what they look like on here. Ooh, they look so different on light. Wow, they flow really nice. Jelly Roll Metallic by Sakura. Interesting. I love the way they look on the black. Oh, 
Oh, I like that color. It's uh, like a bronze color. Let's see what that looks like. Wow. Very pretty. Okay, so that's those. The brush pen and these. I think I need to sharpen one of these. Are these water? No, these don't look like they're water soluble. I almost wish they gave you more than one tube because I've never tried this brand and it would be kind of hard to figure. I, I love Royal Talons, the Royal Talons products that I've tried so far. Um, you guys know I use their art creation sketchbook, so it'd be fun to have a couple of these colors to see how they worked. Let's see what happens with these. Ooh, wow. Wow, these uh, fill in on this paper really nice. Let's see if they're water soluble. Nope, no, so which is good. They stay, they're not moved by the water, which is good. Okay, and then the red. What's the scarlet? I think these give awesome coverage. I should zoom in a little bit on this to show you guys. These, uh, the coverage is incredible. Wow. Okay, that's cool. I like that. I wonder what would happen if I put some matte medium. Oh, whoa, didn't mean to put that much down. And then got like a crappy brush. Where are my crappy brushes? You can move them a little bit with matte medium. I'm curious what would happen if you took these jelly roll pens and like put down a good amount. Oh, that's kind of fun. That's with the matte medium. Huh. That's interesting. All right, all right. Let's try to put out some of this gouache and see what the gouache looks like. Wow, it's really saturated. It's thicker than you would think it was by the way I saw it come out. It's, um, it's a little stickier and thicker than, but it's fluid at the same time. It's very different, very different from what I'm used to. What if I put some gesso in with it? What happens then? Oh, I like the color with gesso. All right. Now, is this dry? I'm interested to see how this writes on this when it's dry. Oh, it does. Can you guys see that? Definitely writes on it. Oh, wow. Writes on the gouache really nicely. It's 
Does it go over the colored pencil? Let's just do some plain colored pencil. Oh yeah, it writes over the colored pencil well. Definitely. So these write pretty much over everything. These are really versatile. Okay, so that's these. I had my um, years, let's see, probably about two or three years ago, I had a um, heavy metal panel run on me and through a blood test. And I've always been pretty careful about not getting a whole lot of paint on my hands. Although there was a time when I was doing a lot of mixed media where I definitely would get, I would definitely move paint around at times and um, use my hands, but I always washed my hands really well afterwards. Hooey, boy, did I have heavy metals in my blood when they did my blood test. So I really, really try to discourage people from using their hands to push paints around without using gloves. I was absolutely shocked at how much heavy metals they found, and um, my body has had a really hard time detoxing that. So you think it's fine and it's fun and um, it's not going to bother anything. We all we always think we're impervious to these things, but um, that the uh, moving paints around that have chemicals and heavy metals in them can um, can make you very ill. And if you have an autoimmune disease, it can definitely add to your problems. So try to be careful if you want to move your paint around with your fingers, try to use gloves in a bottle, the lotion glove in a bottle, or um, wear gloves, wear rubber gloves. I know it's a lot more fun to um, push it around with your hands, but you can't get your health back once you lose it, or it's very difficult to anyways. So I hope you will be careful. So this black is really nice. Let me make sure it's dry. Even the gray goes over it. Yeah, something's wrong with this gray tip. It's just not. It's not working as well as the black. It's like it's dried out. If any of you have used this Tombow Feud pen with the two tips, let me know if your gray works right because this isn't working right. I wonder what happened if I put it in a little water. Nah. Yeah, the gray side just isn't working right. Which is too bad, because it's kind of like the gray side is what I was looking forward to. Well, I don't know. Sometimes it seems like it's working and sometimes it doesn't. Although, eh, it's just not, doesn't seem to have a very rich flow. The black works great. Really great. Wow. Okay, so 
That is the items from the art snacks. I think I used everything. Uh, see, I just told you about getting it on your hands and I got it on my hands. Okay, so that's the art snacks items. Now, what I might do on this other page is play around with these. Okay, I'm gonna turn this page for a minute. I'm definitely gonna come back to this, but I'm going to try and see what these look like on this paper. So these are the Mi Lang. It's a sister company of Paul Rubens. And they give you this nice acetate sheet so you can tell what your colors are. Oh, and they give you the, oh, this is nice. They give you the pigment number. Well, that's really nice. So you can tell the light fastness. Hmm. It has the opacity, transparency. Um, oh, and light fastness on here. That's interesting. If you ever want to know more about light fastness, um, Lindsay from the Frugal Crafter talks a lot about Paul Rubin's products. This is their student line. If you're ever wanting to go more in depth on light fastness, there is um, a few channels that do more in depth. Dr. Otto, Crixis, uh, Crix, no, Chris, oh, I can't think of her name right now. My mind's drawing a blank, but um, I'll put the links below to the channels that have. Jane Blundell goes a lot into that, so. So I just realized something with these. These don't all match what it says on here for color names. Like, uh, see number 205 says it's magenta. And on the actual paint, it says Crimson Lake. 206 says Crimson Lake Deep. Um, 206 on here says Deep Magenta. Um, 003 says matter red and on here it says alizarin crimson but i think the pigments it has the pigment numbers yeah so you if you go by the pigment numbers you should be all right but just be aware that some of these don't um match the names don't match they've changed the names either on the um chart or on the things themselves. Okay, so I squirted these down with a little bit of water. They're in here very tight, these pallets, these uh, pans. So it took a, quite a while to unwrap them. I did test it out and they do fit, the half pans do fit. They're a little bit of a different shape. I think they're less deep than these, but maybe a little wider, but they definitely did fit into this kind of container. And if you're with the Light Fast Police, I will just say these are student grade. I'm using them in my sketchbook. I'm not concerned at all about them being Light Fast. This is just about having a play with these. So um, let's see what they look like as I spread them out on the page. Mm. Nice and bright yellow. I have two water jars over here. Now the colors names are different on here than they are on there. I don't know if you guys really care at this point. If you if anybody wants to see me do a formal swatching of these, I can do that in another video. Um, right now I'm just sort of interested in and having, having a play with them. What I should do too is get out a piece. This is the cotton paper that came with the um, art snacks. So see what that looks like. See what things look, some things look like on here. Ooh, wow, that does look nice on that paper.
Boy, the way these soak into that cotton paper is gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna dry this off and then I'm gonna try the metallic row on the next page. Okay, let's see what these um, metallics look like. Oh, they're very metallic-y. Wow. What if I took these gel pens and tried to turn some of these into flowers?
there's those shiny glittery metallics. I think you can see them glittering in there. And then this swatching was fun to do it this way. This almost already looks like a landscape. You could come in here, it's probably not dry, but you could come in here with the feed pen and do the same thing with the flowers. That would be really fun. Just carve out the flowers. I like this. I actually like this the way it is though. I'm not sure I'm gonna come over this with pen or not yet. Oh, and then this page, testing out the art snacks uh, materials. That was kind of fun. So after the gesso and uh, gouache dried, I ended up going back in with the gel pens and the colored pencils, the Derwent colored pencils. And I was just amazed at how well everything layered over these metallic watercolors. So I didn't even try to stay with the original lines. I just sort of kept going really loose over everything with layer after layer. And it was not only really fun, but I think it looks kind of cool the way it came out. So, um, and I like sort of leaving all this loose down below. So that's a really fun way to swatch some things out and then go back in and um, use the page as the basis for some mixed media. Really, really fun, fun way to do it. And I may end up doing something like that with these pages. These colors are so vibrant. They're just amazing. Really rich. Laid down really well, even on this moleskin paper. So that was fun. I'm not sure how well this showed up on my desk the other day, so I decided to put it up on my easel and um, see if the metallics looked less reflective so that I could show you what it looked like finished. So that's the whole, whole piece. And then that's the layers of the metallic watercolor, there's some in the white areas, there's the Liquitex gouache and even some gesso and then the gel pens and the colored pencils, the Derwent colored pencils. So lots of layers. I really love how I left this area alone. Just the swatching shows through. Um, it was really fun and it came out un unexpectedly expressive. I really enjoyed making that.